Okay, so it's finally time, if you've been keeping track, for me to talk about running an E30 tune on this Golf R. I've been through the process of installing the ethanol content sensor with Fuelit's Bluetooth device. I've got the high pressure fuel pump upgraded with Autotech's internals. And now I have had experience this summer running Integrated Engineering's E30 tune, basically, you know, stage one, no other bolt-ons. Don't even have their intake on, stock downpipe, everything is completely stock except for um, basically the high pressure fuel pump and the tune. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience in trying to mix fuels to get to E30. Uh, and later in the video, I'm gonna be talking about the performance benefits you know, uh, I did a video a while back that was the stock verse uh, stage 191 octane, and now we'll be able to look at the performance of what this stage one E30 tune is. It got better, um, and I think it's pretty close to stage, you know, standard or, you know, traditional stage two power if you're gonna go do a downpipe and tune. You know, I don't have a front mount intercooler. It's, it's all stock. One thing that I'm really, really excited for that's coming is Integrated Engineering is developing their TrueFlex tune for the Mark 7 Golf R. They've already got it released for some model years of the GTI, but basically there's a wire harness that you can connect to an ethanol sensor, plug it straight into your ECU, and the TrueFlex tune will automatically sense what the ethanol content rating is in your fuel and adjust accordingly. So no more map switching, no more having to plan ahead for me to bring my laptop and power link to wherever I'm going in case I need to get gas or a different kind of gas. So that's something that's coming and I'm super, super excited to, to try that out. But uh, for now, in this video, let's start by talking about how I mixed my fuels. All right, so right now I'm just about to fill up with E ethanol oh there we go uh trying to just identify exactly oh man that is so dusty um identify exactly what my fuel level is i'm gonna be using the, the fuel it app to compare to another calculator that i am using online so i'll show you right now all right one thing that's nice about the mark 7 golf r is this analog fuel gauge it has hash marks in 64ths on the Mark 7.5 and Jeremy's car, uh, you know, his S5, it's a digital 1 8th. So super lucky to be able to have, is it 1 8th? Maybe 1 16th, 1 16th. Anyway, uh, super lucky to have those hash marks on there because I can create a much more precise ethanol content in my car. All right, I'm sitting here at the gas station trying to calculate how much 91 and how much E85 I'm gonna put into this fuel tank. Uh, to be able to run E30. Let's talk a minute about how much better the Fuel It app could be <laughs> in helping you calculate this value. There's only three inputs. They allow you to say how full your tank is, what your current ethanol content is, and what your desired ethanol content is, which seems very simple. And, you know, it's like, oh, great. Like, that's going to help me. You know, it, it spits out a number on the bottom of how much 85 you should put in and how much other regular fuel you should put in because it's only caring about your ethanol content. Here's the downfalls of it. You can only put in a whole value for the tank size. So I, I adjusted my tank size in the settings to be 14 gallons, even though my car is a 14.5 gallon tank, it only allows you to put in whole numbers. Uh, I also can't put in what value or ethanol content the actual you know E85 that's coming out of the pump here uh, they just assume that, yeah, it's E85. Well, so many people online can tell you and have shown that it is rarely going to be 85% ethanol content. So you don't have that adjustability. And then you don't have the adjustability to also say what the ethanol content is of the 91 or 93, or if you're in California or wherever, 92 octane, what the ethanol content is of that. It assume, I think it must assume 10%. So that calculator is garbage. It's not going to help you get to the right ethanol content. Man, that calculator could be so much easier and helpful. I'll show you this one that I found online. I, I forget if somebody had shared it with me or if it's just one that I Googled and it was like the first one that came up, but it allows you to make all of those precise inputs 
based on your actual values. So with using that, I have ended up around E31, E32, even though I'm aiming for E30. So I'm gonna try adjusting things a little bit as far as how much I'm filling up here this time. This one I really like because you're able to say the size of your tank, the current fuel level, and the current ethanol level. Um, the desired ethanol level being E30 for me, the E85 ethanol level, I'm putting 76 because Jeremy uh, was able to measure on a full tank of his from the same station that I'm at, that it's actually 76. And then I'm going to also input and say that the um, the 92 that I'm putting in is also at 80, uh, I'm sorry, 8% uh, ethanol. Um, as I measured from not this gas station, but you know mine locally. So I think it's probably pretty close to the same. So now the fuel mixing instructions, I'm gonna be adding 4.69 gallons of E85, 5.75 gallons of you know the 92 octane. So we'll see if I end up anywhere close to E30. Wish me luck. All right, so I just filled up 4.69 gallons of the E85, which says here is the minimum ethanol content is 70%. So we've got it in there. All right, so I ended up with 5.76. I was aiming for 5.75 of this 92, which should be about eight or 10. Uh, ethanol content and um, one thing I didn't take into account was that I was filling up to a full tank and so it actually stopped at like 5.4 I was like oh crap so did a little bit more fill and was able to get that in there so let's see what the ethanol content is and also here is a really quick tip on when you're filling up and blending when you're doing your calculations don't calculate to the max fuel tank capacity when I've done that I usually run out of space for whatever is the second fuel I'm filling up with. I usually do ethanol first and then do my normal fuel, my 91. Um, I'm usually a little short on the 91. So instead of putting in my calculation a 14.5 gallon tank, I'm gonna put in a 14 gallon tank so there's a little bit of breathing room there. All right, so I'm about to flash over to the E30 tune. When you're already on an integrated engineering tune that's not stock, it's always recommended to do this bit to hook up to the battery, but the tune is much, much faster than if you're going from stock. So I'm just stepping through the process here, detecting some things. I've got the device plugged in down here and you can tell that it's on. There's a little green light that displays underneath. Let's see what we got going here. All right, so there's my information. I'm currently on the stage one high torque with high pressure fuel pump, 91 octane. I just installed the high pressure fuel pump last night. I've got the 3400 RPM launch transmission tune. I'm really curious to see other people's feedback about what their RPM launch is. I'm gonna check and do this. Let's see here, stage one. High torque with high pressure fuel pump, E30, next, flash, and the high pressure fuel pump is upgraded. So let's go ahead. Downloading the tune. And I've got my computer connected to my hotspot. So you're gonna need wireless or uh, internet access to download the tune, and then it will go through everything starting to get some stuff pop up here for typical tune flashing. All of this will go away once I've got the car shut off and restarted. All right, so, so far the elapsed time I think is just over a minute to, to write that tune. So check this out, it'll enable. It's communicating. Just connecting, there we go. Finish, turn the car off. Now I'm gonna turn the car back on all right and we have officially started first startup with the e30 tune let's get this thing unplugged now i'm gonna check my ethanol content on my phone i'll do a quick screenshot of what that ends up being uh since i can't record with my phone and show my phone at the same time Alrighty, quick update. While I am uh, slowly rolling through traffic here is that I was able to get my ethanol content down to E30, so I figured out a method that works for me. Um, use 14 gallons as my tank size, do some other calculations, I'll walk you through some of those steps, and you know what? I think I might even make a calculator of my own because, man, 
Zero this, it would be so miles. easy. Keep right. Um, here I go, keep at right. E30, and I'm keeping right. <laughs> I hope that was really helpful for people to see and understand exactly what somebody might go through in trying to mix fuels. Hopefully that calculator that I'm sharing is helpful. Let me know if there's anything that you want to see on there or um, maybe something different. Or maybe there's too much on there. I don't know. Just give me some feedback on that. So one thing that Jeremy and I really have been trying to do with this channel is just be as open and honest with you all about our experience with these cars, parts, installs, tuners, all that. Um, you know, I want you to see that it's not all always good. And so one thing I just want to share is that, you know, with this tune, I did have some hiccups. So after I got all the parts on, got the tune on, I went out to go do my, you know, my test drive and the car was cutting out over like 3,500 RPM, 4,000 RPM. Uh, I immediately emailed the support team at Integrated Engineering, uh, got a ticket opened, uh, sent them my information took some logs, sent them some logs. They came back just asking a few questions about you know the modifications that I had. Uh, if you can see here, I don't have the APR coil packs on anymore, so I'm on stock, uh, stock coil packs. Um, I even started doing a bunch of stuff on my own. I went ahead and changed the spark plugs. Uh, I went back to a stock high pressure fuel pump just to see like what would happen if I uh, started kind of removing you know, one of those variables at a time. Ultimately, it ended up being something with the tune. And so after a couple days of back and forth and doing some various logs, they just uploaded a new file and then I put that file on the car and everything was fine. So um, they told me that I was the only person that ever had that problem. And so I'm not sure that anybody else has experienced that or it's been a widespread issue. So I just wanna share that with you and not say that, you know, the tune was crap. Uh, the tune is great now, uh, but I just wanted to share that Integrated Engineering jumped on it and it was something that we had resolved in less than two days. So um, yeah, I was really happy with that experience. So now let's check me out at the track. All right, we are out here at Pacific Raceways again uh this is like the fourth time this season and tonight i am running integrated engineering's stage one e30 tune uh this is with no other bolt-ons except for a high pressure fuel pump upgrade uh, so we'll see exactly how it runs here in just a minute so a quick recap of the the passes that i've had so far um last week i was out and did stock run totally stock no tune 13.2 in the quarter mile. Um, and then halfway through the night, I flashed over to just a, a stage one 91 tune and ran a 12.43 as my fastest. 12, 12.4, yeah, 12.43, 12.45. Um, and now tonight I'm running the integrated engineering stage one E30 tune with just the high pressure fuel pump upgrade. I did the auto tech internals uh, upgrade and so We'll see exactly how quick it goes. Yeah, I usually wait until I pull up anyway. I just want to let you know, he takes a minute. Okay, thank you, thank you. All these bike queens Here we go. We're getting ready for our third run. Uh, we're getting faster and faster. I increased the RPM launch from 3,400 to 4,000 RPM and improved. So I'm hoping that maybe uh, some of my technique in this next launch will improve and get even faster. So here we go.
I did my driving at the track and that stock run that I had in another video was around a 13.3 when I went to the standard stage one 91 tune I had a 12.43 and then on the E30 tune my best in this in this run uh, or this time at the track was a 12.18 so continual improvement it was roughly about the times that I was seeing when I had a brief moment with integrated engineering stage two on this car. The fastest that I ran midsummer with that was a 12.015. Um, so that's not, you know, a tenth of a second. That's not too far off of stage two power. So if you're interested in stage two power without all the noise, uh, this is definitely a way to go. But you also have to have ethanol readily available. Um, I mean, you also don't if you end up with the true flex tune, so you can literally run whatever you want. Just put whatever fuel in for whatever power level you want to get to. Uh, so the track was great. Daily driving this thing with the E30 tune on was a friggin' blast. The tune was smooth. Um, I had no problems with it once we got the fresh tune uploaded. I, I just don't know what else to say. Like the drivability was very smooth there was it was not an on off switch you know with the throttle um it was everything i expected it to be where just it pulled really smooth through the power band so uh if this is something that you would enjoy i'd say go after it get it and go fast thanks for checking in on this video we'll see you guys in the next one